This video brought to you by jadedpainting.com. If you need your miniatures painted to a tabletop standard, check out jadedpainting.com. Hey everyone, welcome to another painting tutorial. As always, my name is Jay, and today I'll be showing you how I painted this Vulcan Heston model, one of the awesome HQ models for the Salamander Army. So I began with the model primed gray. I just went with a medium color gray. So that way it is an intermediate color and the green can go over it very easily. And using an airbrush just to save myself a little bit of time, I gave a base coat to the entire model using Caliban Green. Caliban Green is the dark, dark green color which will be used to establish a nice foundation for the lighter green colors and it will be used to provide some nice shading in future steps. As you can see, I also applied it to the staff. I kept the staff and body separate just for easiness of painting purposes. And next, to provide some shading and some nice depth of color, I gave the entire model, or at least all the green parts of the armor, a bile tan green shading. I just used a giant fan brush and applied it relatively quickly. And next, once again, using an airbrush, at about a 45 degree angle, I applied a really nice smooth coat of Warpstone Glow. And this will be used to provide some depth of color and a nice highlight over the top parts of the model, leaving the lower parts of the model the Caliban Green that has been recently shaded. And finally, I gave a nice edge highlight to all the parts of the, of the armor that I just really want to highlight with Moot Green, the final green color in this triad of colors from Games Workshop. As you see, I'm just picking up certain parts of the armor which I want to highlight. The tips of the helmets, for example, the sleeves, uh, the ends of the boots, etc. Whichever parts you really want to just stand out when the model is looked at from a distance, I recommend highlighting with the moot green. As I said, I just did a simple edge highlight by dragging the brush very simply across the edges of these parts. And finally, to tie the greens together, I gave some of these areas a Waywatcher green glaze, which will dull down the moot green and just really blend these greens together, create a really nice color for green in which it represents the salamanders perfectly. I just recommend letting the Waywatch green dry entirely before proceeding to the next step. Next, using Abaddon Black, I painted all the parts that I wanted black, uh, which included parts of the sleeves. And some of the symbols. As well as the areas around the symbols of the belt. and the bolter, as well as the ends, the vents on his backpack, as this is a Salamander HQ. And then I also applied the Abaddon Black to his staff, just the handle part of it. And the next step to give all these areas an edge highlight, I just gave a quick overbrush as well as an edge highlight to parts of the armor using a Ministratum Gray. Whenever you're using blacks, uh, you don't want to leave it just black, you want to give it a little bit of an edge highlight with a gray. That way it gives a nice contrast and picks up the, the depths of areas on the model. And for the parts of the weapon, I just gave a quick overbrush, picking up all the raised areas with the gray and leaving the black in the recesses. And then to tie these parts together on the 
on his staff. I just gave him an oil shading, which will dull down the gray a lot and just create a little bit more contrast by just uh, darkening down the gray, getting all the recesses and providing some really nice depth of color. Then I started on the purple areas of the cape. And I used the purple by mixing a one-to-one -one ratio of Mephiston Red and Lawthorn Blue. And this is a great color, creates a great foundation for all the caped areas, which are really purple. And when applying this coat, I recommend just watering it down a little bit. I used a little bit of Leho thinner. Just make sure that it gets a nice coverage over the areas, but still doesn't obscure any of the details when dry. This step took a little bit of time, seeing as there was a lot of cape to paint. And I also painted the end part of his loincloth on his armor with the same mix of Mephiston Red and Lothar Blue. And then next, to get into the recesses and get some shading, I created a purple shade. You can use the purple shade from GW, or I used a one-to-one -one mix of Caribou Crimson and Drakenhoof Nightshade. Once again, this will get in the crevices, provide some nice depth and darkness in the recesses, and then we can highlight all the raised areas afterwards. Just remember to let the wash completely dry before proceeding to the next step, or applying another wash if you are unhappy with the depth of color after a single shading. And then I highlight all these areas by a quick overbrush. You can also use a dry brush if you want to create a, just a little more dust of an appearance. With a one-to-one -one mix of Evil Sun Scarlet and Lothar Blue, creating a slightly lighter color of purple than we used for our base coat. And as you can see, when applied, it does create a nice contrast and there are levels of color on the purple on the cape. Next, I start on the in parts of the cape, as well as the white parts of the purity seals with Ushabti bone. With Ushabti bone, I recommend doing at least two coats. I What I did was I thinned the paint once again with thinner, and then applied two even coats just to make sure I get some nice even coverage, as well as very good solid coverage over these darker areas. Sometimes with Ushabti bone, it can be a little difficult going over dark areas such as dark greens, blacks, or reds. And I applied this color to the inside of the cape, as well as the parts of the purity seals. I will be giving a shading to these areas and then going over with a slight highlight with Ushabti Bone afterwards as well. And I also applied this part to the top part of his mohawk of, the, of his helmet. Then as mentioned, I gave it a slight shading, and it does have purpleness. There's a slight purple tint to the cape in the picture, so I applied the same purple shading that I did in the previous step to the cape, and then I just give a quick highlight to the raised areas of the cape using Ushapti Bone once again. Or sorry, a one-to-one -one mix of Ushapti Bone and White Scars, just to pick up on the nice uh, lighter areas of the cape, which would be explo exposed to the light source when painting it. I also focus mainly on the edges of the inside of the cape as well. So thank you very much for watching part one of this painting tutorial. Please like the video, comment in the comment section, and subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so. It really does help a lot. And when you're ready, click on the link below to go to part two of this Vulcan painting tutorial. Till next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting everyone.